How much did you make in the January challenge? Do you like painting murals or canvas? Are you pregnant? What animal is the hardest to paint? Hey, I'm Sarah. A year and a half ago, I switched from being a marine biologist full time to now creating wildlife artwork. And on this channel, we share how to create realistic textures in nature and also document the process of what it's like to start up your own art business. All right, so because we're closing in on almost 500 subscribers, basically for me documenting time lapses of paintings, we're gonna do something a bit different today and do a Q&A from uh, questions that people have asked on Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, all those platforms are gonna be linked in the description below if you want to go and be friends in real life. Uh, hit me up on any of those platforms and I, I ask people stuff. So these are some of the questions that were commonly uh, sent in. Into our first question, we have, do you regret not getting to 31 paintings because you made YouTube videos? No, uh, we've almost hit 500 subscribers, which is the reason that we're making this video. I keep hitting this plant. Uh, but yeah, basically I feel really good that I merged you know, getting over the perfectionism that you can have with trying to put yourself up on camera. At the same time, I was already dealing with it in artwork and you get to a sense of you only have like 10 hours to work in a day and you just don't care. The goal of just getting it done is a bit more than trying to worry about the little things that you can really kind of stall you in your process. Yeah, so we didn't get to the full 31 paintings of the challenge. I did complete 31 paintings last year in my 2021 31 day challenge, but to honestly like to create YouTube videos and have this content out there and also having gone from zero to now almost 500 subscribers at the time of recording this, I think we're at like 462, I wanna say, but I think that's a great way to start off the year. So 31, psh, we still paint it every day and see, yeah, that was the goal. The next question is what paintbrushes do you use? Have it here ready. No specific brand really. Typically what you'll see if it's white, it's the Simply Simmons brand. If it's, black it's typically artist loft so these are the two brands that i've kind of noticed the majority of my paintbrushes are but uh, basically i kind of stick to the level two section of michael's so these paintbrushes are a few dollars each they're not that expensive so you want to stay away from the cheaper ones that are going to leave bristles in your painting if you're wondering what size is a paintbrush i generally use uh we'll grab a bit more of a selection over here basically i kind of have a three quarters inch paintbrush. This is what I do for a lot of background blending on especially my smaller canvases. For large canvases, I'll even use the size of paintbrush to do those initial wash layers of fur texture and all of that. So you kind of upgrade the size of your brushes when you upgrade the size of your painting to an extent. But for all the paintings that I featured in the January challenge, this is kind of the 14 by 14 or 12 by 16 size of paintings, what I would use these for. So yeah, this would be for background, initial wash layers. Um, then I always have a bunch of number 10 filbert brushes. So I love filbert brushes. They have a nice, smooth, kind of rounded edge to them. And a lot of times these brushes have a really nice tapered point. So these are good for when you need to get a finer detail. I, basically, I used a number 10 filbert brush for my entire Skillshare tutorial just because I was trying to really limit the amount of materials that people would need to use. Um, you can do a lot. Two other brushes that I might use kind of at the mid-range of the painting would be just a regular round paintbrush. And uh, this one's a number four. Basically, I wouldn't really go any smaller than a number four. So you want it wide enough that you can hold a lot of paint in your brush and it doesn't dry it on you. So there's that. Um, I also do like sword brushes. They can kind of help get those thicker fur details. And again, they're, they're a bigger paintbrush, so they hold a lot of paint and they keep it from drying out quite as fast. So that's what's good for that. And then as a last resort, we kind of have our liner brushes. So liner brushes are really satisfying because they can give you all those finer details that really make a painting pop at the very end. But the problem is because they're so thin, they really don't hold a lot of paint. So you're constantly having to manage keeping your paint wet enough that it's smooth, but then also you don't want it too diluted with water so that you lose your pigment. So liner brushes and in general, smaller paint brushes are really hard to paint with. Save these for just the final last little bits of details and you're gonna save yourself a lot of headache and frustration. So next question, uh, why did you leave marine biology? Technically, I haven't left marine biology. I had a uh, 
paper come out in marine mammal science last year, 2021, on pilot whale foraging behavior, which is super fun. You could go check out that paper. You can go look up that paper if you want to check out my research. And basically, I'm also presenting it at the uh, Marine Mammal Conference in Florida this year in August. So we're still attending scientific conferences, still presenting work. And then I have all of my uh, Gen 2 Penguin research from my master's that I am slowly chipping away at getting it to a point where it can be published. So the whole reason that I wanted to try painting for a year was basically because we wanted to move back to Ontario to be closer to friends and family after living away for eight years and also just to have a break to catch up on all these publications. Now that I'm having such a ball painting, I don't know if I will go on to do a PhD in science, but I wouldn't rule it out at this point either. So we're kind of half and half in both worlds, if that makes sense. Do you like painting murals or canvas? Both. Uh, I like canvas uh, because it's the hyper detailed work that I've always kind of gravitated towards and I just have always been a really attention to detail driven person and I find it really satisfying to kind of replicate something with paint and create that at that level of detail. And I really want to be known for my canvas wildlife artwork long term. So that's still my number one focus uh, for my business strategy, basically. But the thing about murals is that last summer they really helped me bridge the financial gap in waiting for canvases that I had to sell or for commissions to come in. And murals are kind of an easy game to get into. It's a bit of a learning curve. It's entirely different painting with house paint and how it mixes and how the pigments work, but it's also super fun taking such a huge space and being able to cover it in a very quick amount of time. So it kind of fits in really nicely with your workflow because it's a really refreshing break from all the detailed work and you can make a ton of progress super quickly. And there's a really big mural project coming up that's an outside mural that we're gonna try and film parts of or at least do updates along the way and see where that gets us. What animal is the hardest to paint? Birds, feathers, they just have barbs. There's a texture within the texture pattern of feathers. They're just, the more you look at it, the more frustrated you get with them. Yeah, it's really hard to capture the essence of feathers without spending time on all of those little tiny details to really to capture the whole thing. Uh, yeah, birds are really, you can spend a lot of time on birds. It's harder to fake what a good feather looks like repeated in a pattern that it does with fur. It's like harder to replicate it, like really true to the animal. You're like, is that 14 feathers spans across the width of this wing? Or is it 16? Does it matter? Uh, it's, you get hung up on all those little details. So birds, birds are the hardest animal. How did you learn to paint so fast? I, I that's a really good question. Uh, basically, my first painting I did as a full-time wildlife artist in my transition, I spent over 200 hours on a fur seal. It's gorgeous, I, I love this painting to this day. But uh, it, it was a bit of a wake up call because at the time, if you're an unknown artist, even if you can create these masterpieces in my own opinion, uh, there's no way you're gonna be able to market and sell to that high price tier just on your own. Uh, it's really, it'd be really hard to do. So I tried to figure out a way to make my style fit uh, a quicker, proportion and that's when I got into the group called the Artist Academy, joined their January 31 day challenge and really just blew myself out of the water um, in how quick I was able to produce something with a slight time constraint and where you're really not focusing on getting it perfect, you're just producing work. So one painting done, on to the next and it doesn't matter, it's basically quantity over quality but it allows you to get really freed in your technique and learn different shortcuts. And you learn so much of a painting in the first like 80% of you creating it. The last 20% trying to make it look perfect is not where you learn a lot. So you just have to produce more and more paintings and really get it out there. And that's how you get fast at painting. Just give yourself a time limit and be like, I'm gonna create the most realistic elephant I can in three hours and paint it and then don't touch it. If you want to go back and work on it more to make it really good, at least give yourself two weeks where you're just like, nope, this is done. And then hang it up on your wall, put it somewhere that you can see it and see how you feel about it in two weeks. I never like my paintings at the end 
but uh, three weeks later I'm like wow I painted that it was pretty good so it just it's all a matter of perspective and when you're too into a painting you can't really appreciate the whole of it that you've done so give yourself some time and distance and you, it's just a lot of learning curve you just gotta keep practicing short paintings pick a time limit and go for it and uh, surprise yourself basically why did you start a YouTube channel uh, basically I started a YouTube channel because I enjoy teaching and it was a favorite part of my university experience. I was a TA for marine mammalogy, animal behavior, uh, diversity of life where you go in and learn all the uh, different animal kingdoms and I just love working with students and kind of facilitating that natural learning curiosity about the natural world and I thought YouTube was a really great platform to do that. We're going to focus the content here so far on the learning painting side of things but I don't know, eventually I would love to have it be like an art, nature, science hybrid channel where we could interview scientists while showing painting that species or do something cool that's kind of a combination of all these things. So we're getting to the end here. Uh, how much did you make in January from the 31 day challenge? And I also got questions about how does it compare to what we did last year uh, during the challenge. So it's kind of tricky to compare because last year I didn't have my website set up yet until March. So when I launched the 2021 collection, uh, three sold in the first month that they were available. But in January, because we had 10 paintings that sold out of the 20 that were painted, which is amazing. And I also sold from the extra social media attention and hype regarding the challenge, a painting I had previously done in 2021. Uh, we almost hit five figures in one month, which is wild because I think we profited about five grand in all of 2021, different startup costs and things I was trying out. So this was like a huge start and a crazy confidence boost. And there's kind of three things that I think really stood out to make this year's challenge so much more successful than last year. It's not like my social media following has grown a ton, but I did have a website already up that people who found my work could go and kind of see who I was online. And second, we kind of opened it up instead of just being uh, cetaceans, whales and dolphins in the challenge, which was super cool to share my knowledge about last year. But by opening it up to kind of a more diversity of life theme, kind of created more opportunity for people to really engage with the content and find an animal species they were really interested in. And by having the animals be voted on by uh, Instagram, LinkedIn, and on Twitter in kind of a head-to-head -head contest for what I was going to be painting next, created a lot of hype. And people who voted for elephant then wanted to tune in and see you paint the elephant. And especially if they were the ones who suggested that animal, there was kind of a high chance they'd feel some, you know, connection to the painting that you created. So it's not a commission, but it's almost like a commission because people are requesting you to paint certain species that they love. And then when you do, they're like, now I really want to buy that specific painting. So it's a really good marketing technique overall. And this whole thing has just been such a huge motivation and such a great way to kick off the year, especially when we were getting kind of forced out of our other studio and had to find someplace new. It was really scary during that time. So it was really nice to kind of have that assurance that we could support this kind of going forward. And just just to reflect on it again, like that, that number is amazing. That's like one and a half times what I profited all of 2021 in one month. Like that's, that blows my mind. And it's just so refreshing to have an adult income again after trying to start this all up a year. And we were in a unique situation because we had moved from Vancouver, which is pretty expensive cost of living to a smaller town in Ontario. So we had a bit of runway, but it wasn't an indefinite runway that I couldn't have like an actual income. So this just makes us really hopeful for the next year coming forward. And this brings us to our last and final question. Uh, wait, are you pregnant? And the answer is yes, I am pregnant. I am 18 weeks at the time of recording this. But uh, yeah, basically we found out we were pregnant the third day of the January challenge, which really changed the whole experience and mindset I had about the challenge and definitely influenced my commitment level to getting a painting out every day. So finding out that we were expecting is the reason that we got initially behind in the challenge. I googled for a whole day. I, what else do you do? Like, I, I don't know. You just look up a whole bunch of stuff. Um, you want to make sure you're doing everything correctly. 
So yeah, and then towards the end of January, and I was so set on catching up on paintings, and I was like, we can do this, I'll catch up, I'm only three behind, I'm only four behind, it'll be totally possible. And towards the middle slash last week of January, I really started to feel unwell. I had vertigo really bad and I stopped driving, so I had to match up my studio time with when I could get a ride in and out of work from my husband. And this is also why February and March, I have basically ghosted from all social media platform, which is unfortunate because I had such a good momentum in January going, and I still really haven't done a lot of the social media push for the paintings that uh, were completed. So thank you for watching all the way to the end of my little channel Q&A here. Uh, if you have not checked out the January 31 Day Challenge series yet, it's the main thing I have on my channel currently. And uh, the tiger is a popular place to start, or if you want to check out the elephant, that's where I go into detail on the exact type of paint I use as well. So we'll see you around the internet super soon. Thanks for watching.